Corey from Brewtronics.com, uh, home of the hose head, showing you some new software you can use on your hose head electric brewery controller today. A uh, new program called Craft Beer Pie 2.1. There's set to be a new 2.2 released here rather shortly. Got to test this out today. It's pretty slick. It has a pretty nice modern interface. Uh, you can go to Craft Beer pie.com and find out more about it but I'm going to show you how to install this software on your existing hose head electric brewery controller be it an original or a hose head 2 or a hose head 3 BC or a hose head 5 BC so first thing I'm going to do is just close out my chromium browser here go back to my desktop I created an install doc you can I'll point a link to this you can download Basically, it's just the installation instructions on how to accomplish what we're going to do today. So, uh, it tells you a little bit about the GPIO settings on the different versions of the hose head uh, over time. And which whatever one you have is the settings you're going to need to use for this. So, that's all in the documentation. So, first thing we got to do is if you have a hose head 5BC, it was already made auto set it was set to auto start every time the controller turned on so first thing we need to do is uh, disable that auto start uh, reason we need to disable is if we have uh, two software running at the same time it's going to conflict with each other and and try to take control of the GPIOs on the system and, and cause all kinds of havoc so first thing we're going to do is just uh, disable the auto start if you don't have a 5BC with auto start then you can just skip this step so I'm just gonna copy this command I'm gonna open up a terminal window paste it in hit enter it's gonna move my auto start file back to a folder on the Pi called auto start and keep it from auto starting and we'll just go sudo reboot it's gonna reboot the controller and the strange brew software will not be running when it turns back on Alright, so we're back to our desktop. I'm just going to open up another terminal window. And we're going to run sudo apt get update hit enter. I don't know if I can type. As you can see in the clock, it's 5 in the morning, and I've been doing this all night trying to create this video. So can't type when I'm trying to sleep at the same time. This is going to run, uh, just run through the update command and download the latest uh, links to everything in the Raspberry and operating system. It just takes a couple minutes. I'm going to pause this until it's done. All right, so that's all finished, and we're back to our dollar sign prompt. We're going to uh, download the software. So, if you download this file, you can just save it to the Pi and just copy and paste these commands without having to type them, or you can just print it out and type them if you want. But this is the command we want: git clone https github craft beer pie. So we're going to go back to our double prompt, we're going to hit paste, hit enter, that's going to download the software off of GitHub and put it on our pie. It'll take roughly 30 seconds. Hit bless, and we're done. So now the software is on the pie, we're going to go ahead and launch the installation. 
So we're going to do CD space craft beer pi, hit enter. And then we're going to launch the install. So we're going to sudo space period slash install. Install dot <laughs> sh. There we go. Welcome to the installation of Craft Beer Pi. All right. So here's something that's gonna ask you first. It's gonna ask you a series of questions. The first question is: Would you like to run app get update and app get get upgrade? We just ran app get update, and we do not want to run app get upgrade. What that's going to do is update the entire Raspberry Pi operating system and depending on what version you have, if it's not the latest, it could take literally hours for that to happen and mess up a bunch of stuff. So we're not going to run this. We're just going to say no. And hit enter. Would you like to install Wiring Pi? This is required to control the GPIO. That is something we need, so we're going to say yes and hit enter. Uh, this is going to install all the software that it needs as far as controlling the GPIOs of the Raspberry Pi. It's going to take about 2-3 minutes, so I'm just going to pause the video. So that actually ended up taking about 10 or 11 minutes instead of the 2 or 3 I thought it was going to take, but we're it completed and it's on to the next question. The next question is, would you like to install Gembird USB support? Uh, a Jumbird is a it's a USB controlled outlet system that's available in Europe. Um, it's not available in the United States. It's not something that uh, we can use. So we're just going to say no. Hit enter. Would you like to start Craft Beer Pi automatically after boot? And we're going to say yes to that. And would you like to reboot the Raspberry Pi now? We'll say yes and hit enter. And it's going to reboot and I'll be back at you. All rebooted. We're going to click on our Chromium web browser and launch that. And that is going to. <clears throat> the address we want to launch is Raspberry Pi 500 base setup. That's going to, well, 500 or 5,000, excuse me. That's going to launch the uh, setup interface for the control panel. And it just takes a couple of minutes to load up here initially. All right, so now we have Welcome to Craft Beer Pie. Start our setup. So we're going to say Start Setup. How would you like to connect your hardware? Uh, several different ways that this thing can control all kinds of different devices but for this application in the hose head we're running plain Raspberry Pi GPIO select that and we have one wire temperature sensors so we're going to select those how many kettles would you like to set up and based on your configuration uh, hose head Uno has only one kettle because it's a brew in the bag where all the rest of them have three so we'll select the three that's going to apply to the rest of them. So the first one we're going to call Element 1 Yellow Sensor. And it's going to ask us for what thermometer we have. The first one in the list is going to be generally the yellow sensor, so we'll select that one. And depending on which version you have uh, is what GPIO we're going to pick. That's all in the installation instructions. But uh, this is a 5BC, so the heater is going to be GPIO 17. Agitator, uh, we can set this as our uh, pump switch if we'd like. It just adds a cool little button up by the auto so we can turn the pump on and off. So it's not necessary, we can add the pumps later, but it's just something that's kind of neat to have. So we will set 
<clears throat> GPIO 23, that's going to correlate to pump 1 on this system. And then it's also going to ask us what our height and diameter of our kettles are. My kettles happen to be 16 and a half inches high by 16 and a half inches wide. Uh, you can divide or multiply 16.5 by 2.54, that'll give you your centimeters. And I think it ended up being 41.91. And that's going to vary based on whatever kettles you're using for the system. So we'll go to element kettle 2, we'll call it element 2 blue. And you can change that to whatever you like. If you'd like to call it hot liquor tank, mash tun, whatever, boil kettle, whatever you're using that element for. We're going to select the second thermometer that's going to cor correspond to the blue sensor. That is going to be GPIO 27 on the 5BC. And we can select this 24. That'll be our pump 2. And the third one we're just going to call black sensor. And that's all we really need to do for that. We'll click Let's Go Brewing. And it's going to bring up our control interface. And I forgot to select the sensor on the black sensor, so I'll hit Kettle Utilities. Uh, where is it? Kettle. And go back up to kettle. I forgot to uh, add my sensor here, so I'm going to click on black sensor and add our third. Hit save. All right. Go back to our dashboard. There's our three sensors. Now you'll notice that they're all in Celsius because the creator of this program is from Germany, I believe, and. It's automatically default to Celsius. So first thing we're going to do is just go ahead and change that to Fahrenheit. Uh, we're going to click configuration and click on unit and change it to F. Hit save. And then this buzzer GPIO is defaulted to the GPIO that's used for one of the pumps. So I'm just going to there is no buzzer set up. I'm just going to change it to GPIO 22 because it's not used by anything. And then we'll go additional hardware and we'll add our pumps. Pump 1 is going to be GPIO 23. And we're going to call it a pump. Hit save. We'll click new hardware again. Pump 2, GPIO 24, pump, and save. Alright, so we're almost finished setting up. There's just a couple more things we got to do. We got to go back to our kettles here, and we have to assign a logic for the PID settings. So from the video I saw, it said select the overshoot logic and set it as to take his mind. I have not actually brewed with this yet. I just started playing with it several hours ago. So I'm going to hit save. And then we'll go to blue sensor, overshoot logic, set that one to two, hit save. And looks like we didn't get our kettles in there either, so 41.91 and save. Alright, so as this, at this point we're fully set up. Um, has a bunch of stuff where you can you can actually go to this website and create a recipe and import it into the software. It is 
supposed to su support beer XML files in the version 2.2 from what I read. This version does not support beer XML files as an import as of yet, but uh, the developer is working on it. So basically this whole thing is controlled by the dashboard and it's similar to Strange Brew Elsinore as far as that goes. It just looks a little different but basically achieves the same thing. So first thing we need to do, we'll go here and set a target temperature. I'm gonna set it at 155, hit OK. So it shows up in here that we have it at 155. And if I hit this button, it says enable automatic mode. That's gonna turn on my solid state relay and activate the uh, heating coil. So um, this button here will actually turn the pump on or off. It shows you back down there. That was that um, extra step we added when we set these up. You do not have to use it. You can use it here or here. But for the gist of it, that's about all there is to it. Um, you can create uh, some mash steps over here. I haven't really dove into that part yet. Uh, but for the base, uh, most part of it looks really, really awesome. Um, let's kind of walk through some of the pages it has. Click on the About. Uh, if you like the software, you know, donate them a few bucks. These guys spend lots and lots of time doing, you know, doing this basically to give the software away for free, uh, just to support the craft beer hobby. So, yeah, definitely, if you got a couple extra bucks, buy them a beer and send them some money. And so that's about it. There's some other information is in the. Uh, craft beer pie install as far as how to enable and disable the the software but uh, for the most part that's it and uh, hope you enjoy the video take care